we pulled in here to the, how do you say it? Castellan? Ca Castellan. Castellan. Uh, it's a historic kind of district here in the park. And they actually had a store open. And Mark had a sandwich. That's not a bad looking sandwich for six bucks. Teddy has some chips. We got some sodas. But we... Cheesy poofs. Yeah, sorry. Cheesy poofs, which means cheese doodles in Teddy language. But we were um, just really excited because we didn't think this store was open because you're on kind of off-season hours here. So some of these other outlying areas aren't open every day. So I don't know if maybe this is only open on weekends, Mark, maybe? I don't know. It, it, doesn't, it says from 10 to 4. Oh, maybe it is. That's exciting. So So I'm getting out and taking my turn to look around now that the guys hit the store. So this was a trading post and actually it burnt just five years ago. 2019, May 22nd, 2019. A fire in Mexico jumped the Rio Grande and of course spread rapidly with temperature, temperatures around 110 and the wind gusts not helping matters any and uh, caught this on fire and burnt this and um, this was also the visitor center at the time so that's rather recent damage it's talking more how like 950 acres on both sides of the river burned before the fire would be fully contained 13 days later um, it's also showing how international agreements allowed for cross-border firefighting, so that's nice. Wow, just minutes after the embers, wind gusts blew the embers into the historic site. And that's why we have ban burn bans in effect all the time, so we don't want this happening. So they are talking about further recovery efforts. The Big Bend Conservancy has established the Castellon Recovery Fund and will assist the park in designing a plan for the future of this historic site. That's good, that's good. And this is showing you the trade and post back in the day. What it used to look like. I was told while his father read the signs when they walked to the store. My son is responsible for this lovely display of rock artwork. <laughs> Teddy loves playing with rocks. All right, I'm gonna kind of go over, look around here, and I'm sure we'll come back here on a future visit. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time today, but just kind of wanted to give you a gist. Mark said the store was really nice. That's the visitor center across the way. love stuff like this. And this just really does plus the scenic drive for me too as well. Especially like I was mentioning earlier, if you are someone who's maybe, you know, not really a hiker or a serious hiker. Hey, there's a roadrunner over on that fence. Let me see if I can get close to show you. Roadrunner hopped away on me. But as I, as I was saying before I got distracted by the roadrunner, you know, maybe if you're someone who's not maybe any kind of hiking beyond easy, easy, easy trails is out of your reach, but you want to enjoy parts of a park like this. It's good to be able to 
really document these areas for you. Unless it was, you know, the time of year where it's super hot here. Today we're really blessed with kind of a unseasonable cold front coming through. So that's made it nice for us. But if you were here during more of our peak season, you know, November to April, so to say, it's good to know that these areas are here. If you would rather get out and read about some of the history, have little easy areas to stretch your legs. I mean, you could even, if you had a rugged stroller, like we used to have our Jeep stroller, you could even push a stroller right around this area easily. I'm not gonna cover much more in detail. You can tell though, I wanna point out, like we knew we were coming closer to the river because when we were coming down, you could see all the green. Green meaning those plants are actually getting water. They're happy. But what a cool area. Something like this just invites me to stick my head in. There are restroom facilities here too. And that's been another good thing on this drive is, you know, there's been a couple of places where you could use restroom facilities. hoping my roadrunner was going to come back. What a beautiful building, beautiful front porch. I mean, what a place to just sit and take it all in. Ah, the view from this bench is phenomenal. Line. Cool looking building down there. I'm not going to hike down to that today. It's the good part when you live in a place, all of a sudden, you know, you can slow it down a little bit and realize, yeah, you know, we'll be here. Plenty of other visits. walk back around the edge of the house here. I want to show you the view. The boys hanging out in the car, patient. Well, I get all nerdy. I asked Mark, I'm like, it's history. Do you want to take your turn? He's like, nah. I think he's just enjoying, he's loving his new schedule here. He gets three days off. He has a 410 schedule, not very much overtime. Nothing like what it was like in Everglades. In Everglades, he went 18 months of pounding out, at least weekly overtime, often working both weekend days. This schedule's been much nicer for having some quality family time. Sometimes I think he actually likes just being able to sit with Teddy, chit chat, stay off his ankle, his bad ankle, and hang out with Lucy. Oh, that is private property. Okay, I won't be entering towards that. One more little look, then I'll head into the car. Okay, so that's the ranger station, the one with the porch I was just on. That's really cool. Really cool area. We've been just taking it all in as we've come down lower here towards the Rio Grande, but wow, I had to get some of this how now you're amongst the green. There's a couple other like ruins I wanna try to get at least a picture of one when we go back up around, but kinda of wanted coming down to just take it all in, but I had to show you this because it's so different as we approach here. Oh, look at those ruins up there. Do you see them, Mark? I do.
we were just having the uh, mom safety speech that rattlesnakes love historic ruins. So always go slow, ears, eyes open, watch where hands, toes, fingers, all of that go. It does look like a castle, huh? We're going to take the path up? Okay. But, yeah, I'll be giving him the mum safety speech over and over and over. Sometimes I make him repeat it back to me. <laughs> Funny, though, Mark made the joke. We keep giving the snake safety speech, and he's wearing his Slytherin shirt today. We should just know he's kin, huh? <laughs> what are you doing, honey? Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, mom's serious though, all joking aside. I know you're wearing your Slytherin shirt today, but snakes do adore historic ruins and stuff. So walk around and enjoy, but be mindful of where you're stepping, where you're putting hands, maybe not digging in the dirt, dirt dirty butt. Okay, I will check. Well, they're not always that easy. Sometimes you see like this pile here, Teddy? You're gonna have a baby one curled up in it. And I trust you. You are, look at that. No, no, don't climb that way, honey. Come up through the opening, please. Okay, next time, come through the entrance. Yeah. We don't wanna knock down the other pieces. And actually, Teddy, I trust you overall because it's not like Florida didn't have their fair share of rattlesnakes just different terrain for you so I'm kind of trying to teach you. Oh, wow. Go around the back side here. Yeah. Yeah, go around the back side or you can go through the front again if you want to. Teddy honey turn around that's a cute picture. Wow. But next time, sweetheart, see there, there's the board. That's probably a better place to stop. Can you do that for me, please? Okay, let's see. You want to be a good role model for other kids, right? Teddy's going around. I was trying to teach him just because it's, it is better if you try to go where the boards are just to help for preservation reasons and not try to go where there's the brickwork. But he thought he had to go all the way around to start at the beginning. He misunderstood me. That was kind of cute. But wow, this view is kind of cool. You can see the little butte sticking up there in the distance. Really nice. Things like this, this is what gives me, I was telling Mark, I said, these are the things that give me gigantic goosies when we're just wandering and you don't know they're there and you find them. Look at you, that's a cute picture. Can we go up that mountain? That might be a... Probably not today because you want to go down to the canyon and see the river, right? Right. Yeah, so we probably shouldn't keep Daddy and Lucy waiting too long. Don't worry. <laughs> He's such my child. He's like, let's just go up that hill and let's just go up this hill. And I'm like, well, in the future... We don't want to keep daddy waiting. We still have other stuff to see. But that is so me. He has that genetic from me of, oh, look, let's just go stand up there amongst the Ocotillo there. Wow, beautiful. What a find. Like I said, there was a couple others that we drove past that I was going to see on the way back. But now I'll, I'll wait. We are trying to fit a lot into one day. We're just all so excited. You know, because Mark and I even, we had never even visited this national park before we moved here two weeks ago. So everything's so, you can if you promise to be careful. Go ahead. Remember, keep eyes and ears open. Look where your toes and fingers are going. But we've already rumbled around in that pretty good. I doubt there's anything still hiding in there. Okay, I'll be down here. This is cool. So this used to be, this is remnants of a stone farmhouse owned by James and Melissa Bell Sublet, settlers who first came to Castellon in 1913. So that's really cool. 
Sublet is recognized for introducing me mechanized farming into the Big Bend. In 1914, the Sublets moved into the Alvino House, which was back up there in that historic district I was showing you where like the visitor center is being housed right now. They cleared much of the land, installed the area's first irrigation system supplied by a water wheel, had hired Mexican laborers to plant new fields of sorghum, corn, alfalfa, and other livestock feed crops. By 1918, with a growing farm business in place, he purchased 2,560 acres in this area and called it Grand Canyon Farms. He built a large adobe house atop a hill to the southeast and a smaller house below, known today as La Casita. Follow the trail to see these other ruins. While little remains of the Sublet's adobe house, their stone farmhouse and La Casita survive and re have received historic preservation treatments. That is really cool. We can go down the trail. Doesn't say how far. Let me take a little peek. Oh my! <laughs> I heard him yelling to me, but <laughs> I see. Why don't you come with me? There's a little trail right here, honey. Go see the other house. The trail actually does go a little ways. I'm sure it's not not too too far, but save things for a future visit too because i know when we get to the river he's gonna linger there quite a while too we'll go see the house a different day let's get down to the river so you can throw some rocks yeah. all right race you to the car three two one go okay you have a quite a dirty bot now boy <laughs> I love dirty bots, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go see if Lucy needs a quick potty break and then we'll head down to the river. I know, we can come here time and time again. I mean, not maybe when it's hitting 100 degrees. Today was a good rare day, but I'm sure through the fall and winter and stuff, we'll come here a lot, huh? We're down here at the trailhead. It, there's a nice like picnic area. There's restrooms here as well. And we're not going to do, obviously, the 1.6 mile loop. We're just going to kind of go in and take a little peek just look at it a little bit just kind of the same thing we're going with today since it is so overcast and temperatures aren't excruciating kind of get a little taste test for everything cool sign here about the canyon partners in protection the Rio Grande serves as the international boundary between Mexico and the United States here the river unifies eight protected areas of the United States, state of Texas, and Mexico into one remarkable three million acre conservation area. Park managers from both countries combine efforts to learn from each other and work together to protect the resources we share within the world. That's pretty cool. This is what he's been waiting for the whole day's adventure to come down and touch the water. All right, go down and we are really low water level wise, but still, this is what he's been waiting for. Wanted to show you the horses and zoom in a little bit more manually. It's a good picture, smile. Yes, you can. It's no, that muck is no different than Flamingo's Beach, honey. Yeah, and you play in that all the time, or did. <laughs> he thinks it's going to be different if he moved down a few feet. That's too funny. <laughs> it's just like Flamingo. Teddy, it takes me right back to the first day you ever went on Flamingo's Beach and freaked out like that. <laughs> and then I couldn't keep you out of it. So the actual trail it has really steep switchbacks and goes way, way up, which is why I'm not doing the actual trail today with him. I need to get him some hiking boots anyway that fit him. He outgrew his other pair. But he did want to come down and at least see the water and kind of see into the canyon. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to get you some mud and stay in the mud. And then you're going to not get me out of it. I know it. That's the way it ended up being in Flamingo. I couldn't keep you out of the mud. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, you're, you're just not as used to it because this looks a different color than it looked at Everglades in Flamingo. But you're getting to throw a few pebbles in the water, so you're happy. 
Don't lose your shoe, please. Okay. Should I strap them? Let me strap them, honey. We are wandering and exploring and we're having a blast. <laughs> he's losing his uh, intimidation, as you can see, and now he's having a complete blast. I'm going to be pulling him out of the muck pretty soon. <laughs> he has this rock he's determined to throw it. <laughs> there, you did it! Yeah, Yay! That's okay. <laughs> You're loving it now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. You can't keep me out of it. I know, I can't keep you out of it now. <laughs> he has found another gem that he's going to take back. No, throw it in the muck, he says. These are the memories I love making with him. All those years at the visitor center there in Biscayne in Florida, in Homestead, and the beach at Flamingo. Oh, look at the swallows in front of you, Teddy. Cute. Ah, oh, yes. These are the precious memories that are worth preserving, even if I take 10 hours of film of it and 13,000 pictures. <laughs> I did it. I kept telling him not to, and then I wasn't watching where I was stepping, and I lost a shoe right off, but, but no harm. I get out easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting him chuck a couple more. Yeah, both of our shoes are caked, but that's okay. I knew it would happen. Just like Flamingo, these will be our muck shoes. You can, you can get kind of close. Remember, it's just going to get softer the closer you get. But you can get kind of close and then give it a good chuck. Give it a good chuck. Perfect! Good job! This is talking about to play it safe because uh, water can rise significantly without warning, especially if there's rains upstate or in other states and all flows down here. So do be mindful of that. So that's kind of what this is talking about and <laughs> the thick mud and stuff. We were having fun with that. I, I knew we'd get into it. That's why I had older shoes on us today. Oh. We're back in the car and we're looking over our Texas Atlas. I finally dug that out of the packaging today before we left. I'm sorry, I'm gonna kind of zoom in here. So as you can see um, how it comes down and there's the historic little site there. And then we look up around here to where the lookout was. And then this little white uh, road is actually what we're on now that brought you down to the trailhead. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit more. That, that white little side road there is brought you down to this picnic area and trail. So yeah, um, the canyon, as Mark was saying, actually goes up through, if you see the water, right there. Yeah, that goes up there. So if you hike up the canyon, you're still obviously in Texas. But like when Teddy and I were playing in the Rio Grande riverbed there, by touching the other bank and we were technically touching Mexico. We found the mama, we just came back by that ranch where I stopped coming up through, where it talked about the mama and the cubs and here in the road is the mama and her cubs. We're proceeding very slowly to give them space, but I wanted to try to video it too. I'm zoomed in quite a bit. The mama and her cubs, oh my goodness. How adorable. Yeah, mama, get your cubs off Look, the road. bears. Teddy, Teddy, do you see bears, honey? Teddy was taking a nap. Look. Right in front of us, honey, there's a mama and her two cubs, you her two em? babies. You see it? I don't. Oh no, probably because you can't quite. Mama's getting her off the road. On the rig? There's a mama bear and her two cubs, honey, a black bear. A mama black bear and her two babies. Yeah, my baby's still mostly asleep. I don't think he comprehends what we're saying. Oh. 
well, I guess I'll end it there. I hadn't closed it out even though I wasn't really filming on the ride back out because once you get down, basically you turn around and come, unless you have four wheel drive and can take one of the four by four roads, you basically just turn around there at the canyon and drive back. But I was just kind of waiting to get to the end and then I thought maybe I'd have Mark pull over, but that was a good note to close it out on. So hope you enjoy tagging along with us. Peace and love, gang. Keep adventuring, and hey, what's next? You really never know where you'll find us next. I kept looking away from the camera because I wondered why that truck was slowing yeah, me down. Too. You did too. You thought maybe another bear. Picture, or a, picture probably. Picture, but so anyway, we will see you on that.